Hostility is like a psychic boomerang. It's harmless phosphorescence. Hello, everyone. I'm Thoreau Smiley, and I have space rabies. This week, I'm joined by... Josh CC, and I need to stop doing so much to <laughs> Brian Lesh, and this movie defies all the laws of nature. Alaric Weber, master of quack foo. And this is Harmless Phosphorescence, the podcast where we watch every theatrically released full length live action superhero movie ever made, gather some research into the production and the source material, and then we tell you about it. This week we are watching Howard the Duck, released. August 1st, 1986, with the running time of 111 minutes. It had a budget of $37 million. It made $38 million. Whew. That was close. Yeah. <laughs> they just got it. Um, and is currently sitting at a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. So uh, that's up from uh, from Supergirl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Is it? Yeah. But, uh, Supergirl was nine. But is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But is it? Um, so uh, this is our very first Marvel cinematic <laughs> movie. All right. Yeah. We are finally cracked Marvel. Yep. Our um, first George Lucas too. Yes, our first George Lucas. Um, uh, would uh, you care to tell us a little bit about uh, the comics, Josh? All right. Well, uh, Howard the Duck was created by Steve Gerber and Val Myrick, I believe. But Gerber was the artist, and he went on to, uh, you know, retain the, not property of uh, Howard, but he's been associated with him all along. He appeared in Adventures into Fear, number uh, 19, 1973, where on the cover he's protecting Red Sonia from the Conan. Oh, yeah, okay. Conan, wow. Red Sonia. Um, yeah, so um, he... He had a pretty successful run in the late 70s and the early 80s. He would pop up here and there. He's been reintroduced to the MCU in the last few years. James Gunn brought him back. Yes. As we know. He's, yeah. And uh, that led to his uh, a cameo in Endgame. Um, something that the movie doesn't really uh, do a good job of telling us is that he lives in an alternate dimension, sort of a mm. mirror Earth situation, not a planet that's far, far away. So oh, that's okay. why there are so many correlations to Earth. It's just that on this, in this dimension, ducks evolved rather than primates. Okay, that makes things so yes. much clearer. I know. A yeah. lot of my questions related to that, <laughs> right. they don't but, really try to tell you. That but that's Duck what World it is. had two moons. Duck World did it have did. two moons, so, and that gets yeah. us to Tatooine, yeah. <laughs> yes. which yes. gets us to George Lucas. Yeah. Um, apparently, George Lucas wanted to make a Howard the Duck movie right after um, uh, American Graffiti. Like, he wanted to make the movie, and he wanted to make it as early as 1973 ish, 74, or whatever. Um, didn't he initially want to animate it? Yes, there was. Well, some, no, no. well, he didn't necessarily, but that came up in the conversations. Okay. Um, yeah. His 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 uh, his uh, um, producers, Hoyk, uh-huh. Ho- Hoyk. I think maybe it's Hoyk, yeah. um, uh, and uh, his wife, Cats. Uh, uh, they wanted to uh, make it animated, but Lucas convinced them okay. not to. Right. I see. And he went yeah, they went to film school with uh, George Lucas. They wrote American Graffiti and then they wrote this um as well. Uh, as well as doing an uncredited rewrite on uh episode 4. Oh wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Howard has had a, a comeback also in the comics in the last 2 years I believe or year. Um but same characters in throughout he lived in Cleveland with Beverly and um his adventure spawned from there. But he's popped up everywhere from Deadpool to Marvel Zombies, that kind of deal. Um, I, there I was saw one. Him, I, I saw an appearance in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the comic book. Yeah. Not, not the show, but. Huh. Um, a, a neat little tidbit. So, yeah, for the movie to be made, I guess Universal did a deal with Marvel, but I couldn't find anywhere if they had bought more properties than that or if yeah. it was like, you know, because Sony was offered all of the library and they turned it down saying nobody cares about anybody but spider-man and um so yeah i wonder what happened with this one you know like we want howard you can keep everything else <laughs> we want this duck story yeah but i guess in the comics he when he first appeared he was um he he was pantsless he only wore a shirt and disney didn't sue 
Gerber, or Gruber, Gerber. Um, but they they contacted him and basically said, like, if you put pants on him, we're fine. All like right, he, yeah. otherwise, he looks too much like uh, <laughs> like like Donald Duck. Donald, it, or I like to think it wasn't because of a. Uh, any sort of likeness that you're just really disturbed by him pantsless. <laughs> I would hope so. Just duck butthole the entire time. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was kind of it. Um, he often uh, did crossovers with Man Thing, which mm. was Marvel's Swamp Thing. And I looked up to see who ripped off who, and they basically came out at the same time, Man Thing and Swamp Thing. <laughs> I don't know how that coincidence Crazy. happened, yeah. or if there was some... <laughs> yeah, espionage, <laughs> but but yeah, one didn't really come much before the other. I think that's all I have on Howard Duxon. His name is Duxon. Howard Duxon. Yeah, but okay. on Earth we just call him the okay. Duck. But the Duck. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a couple uh, little tidbits um about the production itself. Um, of course we'll get into uh, the cast and crew, but um, during the screenwriting process, um, they placed a pretty strong emphasis on special effects over story. Mm-hmm. Um, basically trying to design set pieces rather than a coherent plot. But uh, You can't tell at all. No, no yeah. not even slightly. Um, but uh, then they said it's a... F- oh, the tone of the film is in diametric opposition to the comics. So, so uh, Katz declared it's a film about a duck from outer space. Right, it's which not, is not Gerber's attitude. No, it's not supposed to be an existential experience, whereas Gerber declared the comic book is a series of existential jokes. Yeah, yeah. the humor was kind of subversive and sarcastic. Um, Lucas even mentioned liking that about it. Yeah. The, the comic delved heavily into social satire. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, in the newer run, I bought the first three or four issues, and one of them has him in a... Uh, in a welfare office. <laughs> oh man! Yet again. But does he Just then? Like this. Does he start stealing the half pennies? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, a quick tidbit: the voice of Howard in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, Seth Green. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that brings us more to the uh, the production, our cast and crew. Um. It starred. Uh. Well, let's see. Um. We talked about Lucas and. Uh, the producers and uh they also uh let's see Will- Willard Hoyk and Gloria Katz as you said they they worked on American Graffiti with them um and they also uh worked on Raiders as well as uh Star Wars um and uh then well and it sounds like George Lucas <laughs> kind of made this so that he could um, play around with ILM. Because like yeah. when the deal was being inked, he's like, yeah, just trust me. Like, Go ahead and green light this project. ILM will take care of the rest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we just want to make ducks. Yeah, I think he wanted to yeah, experiment with stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that was totally it. Because he stepped down as president of Lucasfilm in order to do this. Ah, right. To have yeah. the time to just yep. play with ILM. So I'll bet it was a nice, safe movie away from his franchises. You know, yeah. just like let's see what we can do with animatronics. But, so this this movie uh, came out the same year as other George Lucas productions, Labyrinth and Captain EO. Oh, wow. interesting. Mm. Um, wow. Hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting. The idea came from him specifically. Yeah. Yeah, he was into it. Um. So again, okay. Strange little man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so Leah Thompson, the star, um, she studied ballet as a girl. She danced professionally by the age of 14. Um, she was told she didn't have the right body to be a ballerina by Mikhail Baryshnikov. Oh, yeah. He would know. Yeah, he, he would. Um, she moved to New York at age 20 and performed in a number of Burger King advertisements in the 80s alongside Sarah Michelle Gellar and Elizabeth Shue, her co-star oh. from Back to the Future. Right. Um and then she made her home media screen debut in 1982 as Cici, Sissy Loper in the interactive live action video game Mystery Disc Murder Anyone? What? Her, what is that? She she starred in a interactive live action video game called Mystery Disc Murder Anyone. <laughs> she's she's taken right. some interesting risks. She has yes, in her yes. career. And then of course she moved on to um, Red Dawn, uh, Back to the Future, Space Camp, Howard, of course, some kind of wonderful uh, casual sex, um, Back to the Future's part two and three, where she got an extra role as her own son's 
girlfriend, which yeah, I yeah, never mind. That yeah, that always bugged me. But um, uh, the the last she was in a bunch of stuff in the late nineties and through today that I haven't really heard of. She uh, had her own sitcom called Caroline in the City, where she was a, a uh, comic strip artist, a cartoonist. Yes, exactly, yeah. Caroline in the City, and she also was in the Beverly Hillbillies and the Little Rascals. Oh, she was in the Little Rascals and the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Far out. Yeah. Um, I love Leah Thompson. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. She's adorable. Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, it also starred uh, Jeffrey Jones. Oh, Jeffrey Jones. Yes. Let's get to Jeffrey Jones. Um, so he was all over the eighties, just all yeah. over him. Okay. Um, who's but... Harry? Oh, yeah. So okay. Um, he was in Amadeus, Beetlejuice, uh, best known as Rooney in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, he was in Harry, Who's Harry Crumb, The Hunt for Red October, Ed Wood, The Devil's Advocate, Stuart Little, Ravenous, Sleepy Hollow, How High. Um, he was a regular on Deadwood. He did voices on Batman the Animated Series and Justice League. Mm. And in 2002, he was arrested for possession of child pornography and accused by a 17-year-old boy of solicitation to pose for nude photographs. Mm, yep. Wow. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, the mighty have fallen. I know. Rooney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to look at him now. Yeah, it really is. He uh yeah. Um he he Kevin he he Kevin Spacey before Kevin Spacey. <laughs> yeah, before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Um so uh we've also got Tim Robbins in there. Yeah. A a young Tim Robbins. Um graduated from college in 1981. Uh, then founded the Actors Gang, which was an experimental theater group, uh, along with uh, some of his college softball team, huh. <laughs> which included yeah, of course. John Cusack. Wow, wow, yeah. Uh, and and who Jack- was considered to be the voice of Howard the Duck. Oh, yeah, really? he yeah. auditioned. Yeah. For, yeah. Um, Interesting. And wasn't Jack Black somehow involved in this troupe of his? Because he that might be. a lot of those people in the troupe um, were in Bob Roberts. I don't know if anybody's seen Bob well, Roberts. Yes, yeah, yeah, and and um. Tim Robbins actually was also in uh, Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny. Yeah. Right. And High Fidelity. That's, oh, yeah. oh yes. With Jack Black. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. So, and John Cusack. Yeah. And there was a, a recent so uh, good in one, there. I think it was on HBO, uh, one season of a show called The Brink. Oh. Um, oh, oh yeah. yes. Yes, Politi- I remember that. Political humor. And it's the two of them. Um, huh? It's uh, Tim Robbins and Jack Black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have seen It was a fun that. show. Like I liked it. for that or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, Tim Robbins, of course, <laughs> went on Top Gun, Bull Durham, Eric the Viking, Tapeheads, Jacob's Ladder, Cadillac Man, Bob Roberts, The Player, The Player, Shortcuts, The Shawshank Redemption, The, Shawshank Shawshank Redemption. the Hudsucker Proxy, yeah, cool. Dead Man Walking, Austin Powers 2. <laughs> um, the list goes on. We'll see him again in Green Lantern. Yeah, we will. Right. We will meet him again in Green Lantern in sometime next year. I see. T- Tim Robbins every day because uh, one of the only DVDs I know that just keeps playing on a loop is the Shawshank Redemption. So mm-hmm. I put it on for my dogs when I leave. <laughs> so there's background noise. Yeah. So every morning or afternoon, I see Tim Robbins sentenced to Shawshank. <laughs> one, one day, and I always come gonna... home when Brooks is hanging himself. Oh wow! Jeez, oh, wow. You know, it's Man. a bummer. Your dogs right. are going to learn how to escape from watching that movie. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I tried Forrest Gump, but it doesn't replay. <laughs> it stops. <laughs> it's probably for the best. Yeah, they're learning a lot about prison in Maine in the 40s. Do you think that's why there's so much Shawshank on, like, TBS? <laughs> they just forgot For to take the disc. Yeah. <laughs> they forgot to take the disc out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we found it calms dogs. Uh, even the sexual assault scene. Yeah, even though. Especially. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> they're dogs. <laughs> they're into it. Um, nice Chip, Chip Zane. Zine or Zane, I don't know. Is best known. I've 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 come to realize a uh, ongoing theme on this is me not knowing how to pronounce names. Oh yeah, yeah, um, and not looking into I, it. We can we can work on. I don't it. know either. Is, no, no, is, I I prefer is, to not look into it. <laughs> well, and it's not like we're often dealing with the A list <laughs> of celebrities. Yeah, it's could true. be Zine, 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 Zine. I'm sure, Zane. Zane. I'm sure some be, of these people still have. Haven't you seen Monty yeah. Python? Zod, <laughs> but it's spelled Z O D. But it's pronounced Mr. Ferry with a big old bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember what John Cleese says. Uh, so old Chip is best known for playing the lead role of the baker in the original Broadway production of Into the Woods by Stephen Sondheim. That's That's him? what Wikipedia tells me. That's him? <laughs> That's him. Uh, 
Um, he has also appeared in all of the Marvin stories musicals by William Finn, of which I have never heard. Um, yeah, he's done a lot of Broadway. Yeah, he's I done a, really fine movies. He's done a ton of Broadway. He's he was in nice. United ninety three. He was in Love American Style and a bunch of TV. Chips, uh, Ryan's Hope, uh, Grace Quigley as the world turns. Cheers, um, New Heart. He was in Hello Again. Uh, 30 something law and order uh he, a bunch of small roles walk on roles in uh, tv and he's the guy that voices howard right the voice of howard yeah not there were seven little people that played he was the, role Bippy, of the clown and wings <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's amazing um he, oh he was in breakfast of champions yeah. the bruce willis oh uh, nick nolte <laughs> yeah no 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 oh yeah yeah that's right nolte nick played, nolte played Kilgore Kilgore. Trout. that's right he was in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are undead. Yes. Oh, the <laughs> the I didn't know that existed. I don't have to yeah, Neither did I. Yeah, that's beautiful. He uh, was also in. Very meta. <laughs> he was also in three episodes of House of Cards with yeah. Kevin Spacey. Yes, yes, he uh, was. Done a lot of work with some questionable actors. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the duck, you can count on him. Yes, <laughs> he's not a pervert. <laughs> so, um, oh, so you said uh, seven little people. I think there oh, were yeah. there were only two. Um, a lot of the the credits were going to the special the puppeteers. effects people, the puppeteers. Yeah. Okay, yes, good point, good point. Um, the uh, music was by John Barry, best known for composing the James Bond theme. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, best known, I would say. Yeah. Um, he also, um, I I cut out like half of the list of movies he's worked on, which is insanely long. Um, but he also worked on Body Heat, um, uh, The Cotton Club, <laughs> oh, Jagged cool. Edge, Out of Africa, Peggy Sue Got Married, Hearts of Fire with Bob Dylan. Yes. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Rupert Everett. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dances with Wolves, Chaplin, Year of the Comet, Indecent Proposal, um, The Scarlet Letter, Mercury Rising, Enigma, and... He composed the score for The Incredibles, which was then rejected. Hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. And then um And then Thomas Dolby did, did the uh the yeah, songs. The yeah. Song. The songs. Best known for She Blind. <laughs> exactly. Um so uh Were you gonna talk about Ed Gale at all? Um talk about Ed Gale Al. Ed Gale was um the uh, the leading body actor for Howard the Duck. Okay. Um Howard the Duck was his first movie. He was also later. He would later be in Spaceballs as one of the Dinks, uh-huh. um, Child's Play as a stunt double for Chucky, Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town, classic <laughs> I, Zombie Town. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice that they it. stay within the borders of their municipality. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey as Station, Station. station. Yeah, Station. <laughs> oh brother, where art thou? He was the little man. Oh, okay. Huh. Oh yeah, bragging on their own midget. And he was also in Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle as the mole. Oh, okay. The mole. And he, he was in a number of other things, but those were the ones that popped out in him. Okay. So, um, cool. yeah. Um, this is Howard the Duck. Why don't we uh, take a listen to the trailer? Across the sea of stars lies another world, a world almost exactly like ours. This is where he lives. He's 27 years old, single but searching. Favorite sports, windsurfing and Aikido. Favorite pastimes, cigars and sex. He has everything except fulfillment. And then one night, it happens. Hey, good buddy, are you home? He has a very sudden midlife crisis. He lands in Cleveland. You do know why you were sent to me? Listen to me, small visitor. I can explain how you got here. Maybe you're here for some greater purpose, some cosmic cause. Here, he's forced to reassess his career goals. You went to med school? To explore new relationships. (laughs) To redefine his self-image. I'm sorry, we don't allow pets on the premises. To adjust to a changing lifestyle. I pull it out! Until he discovers just who he really is. Oh, no. A duck in big trouble. That's a duck, man. Howard the Duck, trapped in a world he never made. That was Howard the comic the tagline, too. Trapped in a world he never made. Um, yeah. I, I take a little bit of offense to that because 
I'm trapped in a world I never made. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. We yeah. Exactly. all are trapped are, in a world we never made. Yeah. yeah. So not trapped in a world he is unfamiliar with. <laughs> right. That he never made. Yeah, that's everyone on Earth. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um <laughs> loophole one. That settles the argument about the existential <laughs> yeah, right. crisis yeah. thing too. Uh, um let's see. So uh Siskel and Ebert. Um oh shit. Um did they had to watch it? Talk about it in worst of 1986. They didn't have. Oh, it, they didn't review it on. They its didn't own. give it its own segment. No, um, but um, um, but <laughs> Siskel's all like, I think Karen Allen should have played <laughs> right. Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see the wires. No one's flying, Gene. I could see the wires. Uh, they gave it two thumbs down. Um, I didn't catch a clip for that. Oh, so Fair we have enough. thumbs. Are, are we're gonna have? Thumbs moving yes, forward. Yes, they oh, actually have, evolved. Yes, yes, they have thumbs, un, as does Howard. Soon they'll be making simple oh, yeah. tools. <laughs> simple <laughs> film <laughs> review tools. Cool. Yeah, they were that. Uh, so um, with that, uh, you, you fellas ready to go ahead and get into this thing? Yeah. All right, everybody, this is Howard the Duck. We open with some... Uh, Smooth 80s sax. Yeah, it's yeah. It looked like it's a crime drama, like right. a cop movie from the 80s. Moon, the Skyline. Yeah. It was Blade Runner. Or like, or like a or Blade yeah, Runner. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I, expe- I expected Noir. like like Nick Nolte or a pre-accident Gary Busey to like come out of like <laughs> Right. Yeah. In the messed up, you know, uh office of their private investigation. Right. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. He sleeps there, eats there. Very noir. Um, and yeah, there's a city under two pink moons. We come to discover that the the city is Washington, D.C. Marshington. Marshington. Yeah. Uh, Marshington. All right, that's not too bad. So the, the duck, <laughs> no, no, because the duck puns, <laughs> I started to I started to have a problem with the basic concept of the duck puns. Oh God, yeah, everything. Well, I good. know they treat it sort of like the Smurfs treat it, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the, just an all-purpose. The planet is simply called Duck World, right? Yeah. So we don't duck call world. this human world. No, we don't. No, yeah. we don't. We don't like. We there, also don't call it Cleveland, there was right? A, the 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 person on his <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland. Um, yeah, all, they didn't do any. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say that we don't call the man on our dollar bill George Humanston, <laughs> like George Duckington. Oh, well, it's Marshington. Marshington. Mar- was it Marshington? It yeah, be. but George I know Ma- it. George Marshington. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It should be. But again, the movie didn't really. Explain that to us that you know it's a mirror image, you know, dimension no. in the comic. It's still sort of a wormhole he's well, sucked through. And the ri- well, the writer, her the writer of the film herself said he's a duck from outer space, right? I mean, which we're all from which outer space. Her, her, <laughs> you're just blowing minds whoa, whoa. Yeah, right, right today, Brian. <laughs> He's just a normal duck, you guys. Yeah. That's the craziest part. Maybe this 20, is like a Fight Club situation. A, yeah, right. a 27 you know, Beverly's the only one that can see <laughs> Howard, and he just wants you needs to kick ass. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, what are the odds that, like, this a 27-year-old... He's anthropomorphic. Okay, he, he is smoking he, cigars. He comes so off as much more mature. Yeah, he, I don't know what the life expectancy is. He should have been, like, 45 or yeah. 55 right. or something. I mean, he, lo- like... he looked youthful, but he carried a lot of weight. What it, was his job? Did he, he work for the government? Yeah, or he was something? an ad copywriter. Ad, ad copywriter, copywriter but, yeah. which, but he gave up his dreams of being a rock star yeah, to yeah. become so, an ad copywriter. In high school. He, he gave up med school med to school. Right. pursue his dreams of being a rock star and then gave up his dreams of being a rock star to become an advertising copywriter. Because his parents wouldn't stop hurrying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So and, he's George Costanza. <laughs> exactly. Well, and his... his <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but George Costanza didn't have dreams. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he, he sometimes he didn't wear pants. <laughs> yeah. For this. yeah, well, yeah, he had, yeah. Um, but no, because his his girlfriend's dad w- uh, was in the advertising business, and he got him the job as a copywriter. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Al. <laughs> uh, Twenty seven. Either way. <laughs> really right, but his apartment. Detail. There's a lot going on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so Howard arrives home um, uh, from a day at work. Uh, listens to his messages, grabs a beer, feeds his fish, and the the beer was Birdweiser. Birdweiser. Oh, I figured there was a pun. I couldn't catch it. I didn't yeah, see I, it. it I thought on. it was going to be Duckweiser, uh-huh. but um, but it turned out to be Birdweiser. Uh, they, they threw you for a curve. Yeah. yeah. There were, there was also um, Tyson fried chicken in the fridge. Oh, what? Wait. And he makes a big deal about what? eating. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Hey, yeah. Um, I like all the movie posters. Weren't there frogs in the fridge? Oh, no. 
Frogs? Like jelly frogs? I, I did not know. catch the frogs. Yeah. Jelly frogs. I didn't really look in the fridge. I'm gonna. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna never go stuff. back and do that. Just the way that they depicted Duck World as being normal. Just this so is normal. Duck. Yeah. To to an annoying extent. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. It, wow, it's just as lame as our yeah. <laughs> dimension. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. Yeah. There's but, nothing remarkable about Howard everything except is for a duck his fun. <laughs> quack foo. Yeah. So he's got. They m- are constantly mentioning the fact they are ducks. Yeah. <laughs> like to themselves. Yeah. There were a lot of details on the breeders of the lost stork. Yeah. Yes. Why wouldn't yeah. raiders um, of never the lost stork? Yeah. Breeders. So uh, Indiana Drake. Uh-huh. Well, only birds breed. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Indiana Drake, the new hero from the creators of Beaks and Fowl Wars. I'm assuming Beaks is their version of Jaws. Jaws, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <coughs> um, and then down at the bottom is said from Lake's film... LTD and Stellar Pictures. That's Lucasfilm. So yeah, yeah it would be uh, in this on Unit, this planet yeah. would be George Lakes, and I'm just guessing Steven Spielberg. Oh, it and would definitely be Universal Steven. Pictures. Was probably the uh, uh, Stellar Stellar, stellar yeah. Pictures. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, <laughs> they didn't have a good bird joke for that. <laughs> I guess not. For Universal. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a splash dance poster as well. Yeah, splash yeah. dance. Yes. A flash dance, and then my little chickadee with Mae West and W. C. Fields. W. C. Fowles. Right, exactly. Then that's what Mate first made guessed. me be like, uh, everybody seems to have a bird-related last name except for Howard. But he does. Then I found out it was Duxon. Yeah. But yeah. Well, in the movie, it's act- on the license, and on his Ooh. mail, it actually says Howard T. Duck. Wait, right. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Right. Wait, wait. Yeah. The human equivalent of that is Manson. Oh. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, man. All right, let's, uh, let's jot that down. <laughs> let's put that in the dossier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the son of man. I'm the man son. Uh, I'm the son of duck. I'm the duck son. <laughs> you're looking through me because you're looking at yourself, man. There's an old I'm photo. I'm a copyright editor. There's an old photo of Howard uh, in a pot field. Oh, yeah. Or, or oh, yeah. That was awesome. Field. Yeah. yeah. Those uh, good old days. In his, in his, his young days. days. His, oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Wasn't he in hippie clothes? Yes, he was. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, wait, wait, wait. Linen specs. Yeah. He's only 27 he's in 1986, so he would have been born in 1959. So that would have been mid seven, yeah, I guess mid seventies. Well, time is different there. So like Woodstock <laughs> happened much later, and it was actually started by that bird from Snoopy. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a way different. That happened later, like in the seventies. Um, so uh, there's a poster of his uh, Howard and the Heartbreakers band. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so I just assumed one of their hits would be the waiting is the hardest part <laughs> the waiting <laughs> you really went all out on this uh, one now i'm proud of you beak down <laughs> flapping down a dream oh wow Whoa. you missed your calling wow duck if buns. we do figure out if we do He's figure out time hunter. travel it's to get al in that meeting <laughs> like who is this, this kid this i don't movie. know doesn't matter <laughs> he's got ideas you're like, Sorry. wait, I have more duck puns. <laughs> right. So there's nothing good. I can on... do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing good on TV. Um, there's a crazy, crazy Webby, Qua- crazy Webby. Yeah. Commercial. So on the East Coast, there's Crazy Eddie. Did have you guys ever heard of Crazy? Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar yeah. with Crazy yeah. Eddie. Yeah, he was an icon. Um, and uh, yeah, Crazy Webby. And what was the what was the soap, soap opera that they were watching or the Doctor Show? I'm sorry, I didn't catch I, that. Uh, eggs of our lives. Uh, ooh, no, nice. I don't know. Um, so uh, he picks up all a, my eggs. All right, they're getting weaker. As, as the nest, <laughs> as the nest work drop them with Brian first. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, he picks up a Play Duck magazine. Oh, yeah. Okay, and he muses. It's probably the biggest problem hmm. in the movie. <laughs> the Play Duck. <laughs> he he muses. Hmm, who'd they interview this month? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A joke to yeah. Beca- but we all were. We just read them for the articles. Yes. Yeah. The, the, b- before the internet. Kids, well, yeah. and of course, he yeah, immediately turns to the centerfold. Yeah, and we yeah. see our first set of duck tits. Yes, right. It was so duck boobs. Duck boobs. Well, duck, duck nipples. Really, could they could have pulled off breasts? You know, like just the formation of feathers. You know, sort of like they do in cartoons. You know, yeah. they don't draw boobs, but that's just sort of the shape. Yes, of so that duck. But no nipples. <laughs> so, so here's the question: In his world, are ducks mammals? Uh, no, because he he won't eat eggs, as we'll they, see so later on. So they do on. come so from eggs. Yeah. They shouldn't be. So why would ducks have nipples? Well, maybe they're why just only the female decorative, like the the portholes on those old cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, oh. um, so you have to have them on, or you, <laughs> or you, you there's you, no there's no functional <laughs> purpose to them. They just 
Well, it's yeah, th- those are male nipples. But why did the, fe- <laughs> the females have nipples? Okay. Why yeah. did the females have mammalial glands at all? Also, right. just I, I know we're just trying to guess <laughs> at what Duck World is really like here. But why did we have to see that? Right. Twice. Twice, Twice. So, in this movie. So he, right. As so, many times as Naked Cow L. You know, who? free the nipple. I'm all about it. But why duck? But human duck nipples. boobs two. in the movie. I mean, two I'm, instances of duck boobs. And right. I, I'm not here to knock anybody's fetishes or anything, but a million furries. Why you look were at me? Born overnight. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I haven't been to your house. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I do like ducks. <laughs> <laughs> You're a duck that guy. Know me. Know that. Um, well, but okay. only as friends. But so. Who is this movie for? Is okay. it because it's kind yeah. of like a kids movie? Oh, it's PG. It's rated PG. It is which PG. Duck boobs, which we, we know, PG. but it's not actual something else. nudity. You know, no, this right. was eighty six. This was yeah. post thirteen, right? Thirteen had already gone into effect. The PG thirteen. Oh, I so. think so. Yeah. So, and it's not just these boobs. That's comical. I wouldn't care. You know, if kids yeah. saw those. But oh, yeah. Like there are so many elements where it's just like, oh, really? Are the kids? Uh, well, okay. Do the kids I mean, think the tiny condom? I'm sorry, but Leah Leah Thompson. Cavorting on the bed later on. Like, oh, yeah. It was like it's, very overt. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, not to, you know, get into too much of that, because this movie is a disaster with or without the nudity mm-hmm. of ducks. And not to, well, and the, 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 the love spa that he works in later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> well, some yeah, interesting was, decisions. Yeah. We've got, we'll get That's there. based I, on something. I, I think the target audience for this is drug users. Honestly, um, that's the yeah. only thing that I can think. I don't know if they that, care. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's like we were saying earlier. I think maybe Lucas wanted to test out some new shit at ILM. Well, he uh, <laughs> like, and make it. I, I, this didn't come up in the production notes, but uh, he bankrolled this movie, in intending, of course, to make money. Or, sure, sure. Yeah. And he did not make money. The plan was that this movie was going to put him into the black, and its failure led to him selling uh, the digital aspect of ILM wow. to Steve Jobs, oh. which became Pixar. Pixar, yeah. So Howard so, the Duck yeah. directly led to Pixar. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So guess, you know? Yeah, thanks, Harry. Like, that's what we get for having animatronics that fail. If well, it had been a successful animatronic hey, but, movie, that but, might not But now, thanks to the fact that uh, we are living in the darkest timeline, mm-hmm. those those are all back under the same house again. Yeah, yeah. all over. Yeah, it's... I thought the animatronics were pretty cool, actually. I thought Howard's face was extremely expressive. Yeah, for the he, time he looked like, great. Yeah. Although they when had he was scared, thing. he looked scared. When he was mad, he looked mad. And they they did have a lot of problems with them, though. Um, oh, so I'm sure. so uh, because of the limited preparation time, very ducks created for the film would explode, lose feathers. Multiple ducks were built with the wrong proportions. <laughs> Um, on the first day of shooting, the crew realized the poor quality of the effects when they found the that the inside of the puppet's neck was visible when its mouth opened. Oh, wow. Um, Hoyk uh, repeatedly reshot scenes involving Howard as the animatronics were improved. Um, and because multiple puppeteers were in charge of controlling different parts of the animatronic duck, Hoyk was unable to, co- to uh, coordinate the shoot properly. Hmm. You can kind of feel that throughout the movie, too. It, it's... It's shot like a like a Disney play on set kind of thing. Yeah, no it's not very interesting. Yeah, it's not very interestingly staged. Um, not that Dutch angles would have saved this, but uh, <laughs> a, yeah, a an point, interesting, though. a very interesting um, uh, tidbit uh, when the uh, the the chair is propelled out of the apartment on wires. Those were the that's the first instance of wires being digitally erased from a film. Oh, oh, wow. Cool. So, huh. Yeah, experimenting. I they could it. have used that in later sequences, like when he's spinning around and you can see the rope still. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Anyways, yeah. yeah. So, um, as he's reading the latest issue of Play Duck magazine, his armchair begins to quake violently and propels him out of his apartment building and into outer space or possibly through space time. I've now. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. They didn't explain Did that. he call it an earthquake? At first, yes, because that's what it felt like. Not, or, not a duck quake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Um, yeah. A beam of light. Oh, right. Yeah. Why would he call it that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A beam of light sucks him through the cosmos. Then a voiceover tells us the secrets of the universe. Well, and that voiceover uh, is is listed as the voice of, voice the, cosmos. of the cosmos. <laughs> yes. The Just titles hilarious. looked pretty cool. The yeah. titles look cool. Well, yeah. And he Howard says, the Duck. Yeah. yeah like and, like, twist. and he says, in the beginning was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Howard the Duck. Yeah. It's gearing up, gearing you up for fun. Yeah, oh, it yeah. really is. Too bad. Yeah. Um, that opening sequence was amazing, though. That whole him getting sucked out of his house and okay. that, space. It looked amazing. It looked so amazing. Um, Howard eventually lands on Earth in an easy chair in an alley. 
he is immediately accosted by punk rockers who try to get him into a club where Leah Thompson is playing. Uh, he's, not, he's not let in as they assume he is a child. I described them as glam punks. Glam. Uh, would, that be, uh, would that be correct? I <laughs> mean, is that the kind of feel? Yeah. It was punk rockers at first, but glam punks later. Uh, well, you, you see their costumes change a little bit. I don't know. They just looked like the the 80s versions of what people thought, you know, bad rockers looked like yeah, at that time. Yeah, exactly. like, so, Lots of studs. There were so many leather. movies with, like, tough guys that, well, that was the culture. All those hair bands. Yeah. And, you know, well, yeah, like, but, like, really pretty tough guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and but then, like, Madonna, like, and, like, that kind of, like, I'm punk, but I play pop music kind of, like, right. look yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he had a lace uh, glove. Yeah. Which, which Leah Thompson's character, Beverly, was clearly oh, Madonna. Oh, yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. I think she, she even says that in her, like, yeah, uh, in the production notes I read. But um, do you see the dude's jacket with all the doll heads or the baby faces all over it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right, the, the, the dolls. <laughs> the guy who did there. too much toot. Toot, yeah. <laughs> yes. Or toot guy. Uh, so they uh, they grab Howard and use him to taunt a dweeb. That's yeah. their first yes. action. Oh, that's right. right. Yes. Hey, you that's see this my talking day. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he was down with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, he has a series of mishaps, including a run-in with an all-girl biker gang. <laughs> Wasted. <laughs> um, Satan sluts. Satan sluts. Oh, yeah. That's the name of the biker gang. That's, mm-hmm. right. um, that's not my description of them. They seem like very normal. <laughs> a very normal people. all-female <laughs> biker <Yeah>. gang <laughs> from the early eighties. Yeah. Try not to get into trouble with uh, biker gangs out there. Uh, um, yeah, she knocks the shit out of Howard. She yeah. like. Yeah. Hulk punches him off of her motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, no, it was Long like a, distance. it was like a Miss Piggy thing. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh yeah, where she does the flying kick. Yeah, it was great. Uh, um, have we seen Cherry Bomb yet? Cherry Bomb is playing They're in playing throughout in this. We Be- see really behind a chain link fence. Rock and right. roll band. Hey, yeah. you gotta yeah. stop those glass bottles somehow. Oh, I know. Right? Yeah. She's like that was the theme to the TV show Rawhide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At this point, they're playing the song uh, "Hunger City." By yeah, it's Thomas Dolby. By I Thomas Dolby, per- <laughs> performed, performed by, by Leah Thompson, Thompson and yeah. the rest of the actors. She was, as she was Cherry okay. Bomb. Yeah, she was. Yeah. A, I mean, so is Cleveland? What is it? Hunger City? Yeah, I, <laughs> she's living in Hunger City. <laughs> Clearly, Cleveland is a, this post-apocalyptic punk rock wasteland. Well, yeah, the Cuyahoga yeah. had caught on fire a little <laughs> it, bit. Well, before it, that, I mean, have you been through Cleveland? No, I've it's never not been. that far it's off. It's one of the. Mm-mm. Few states I've avoided. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Do not. It's not Hunger City, though. Um, uh, yeah. Ohio and Indiana in general, like there's a lot of places <laughs> you don't want to stop at. Um, so, to all of our listeners in Ohio and Indiana, I love your states. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll stop at your house. Yeah. Um, Hunger City is one of the better musical moments in this movie. It's pretty too. good. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's a few that are not great, and yeah. then there's a few that are pretty, are yeah. pretty all right. This, this is great. And was that homeless lady that hits him? Was that Ruth Buzzy from Laughing? <laughs> oh, was just, it? No, I, don't I don't think know. so. It looked exactly. <laughs> wow. Even her face. Um, yeah. Yeah. So eventually he hides in a barrel. Um, the, the one that the uh, the Satan slut knocked him into. Yes. Yeah. yeah he just, decides just, to stay there. I'm just going to chill here. Yeah. He's it's, exhausted. It seems safe. Figure out his next move. Right. Oh, here's the doll head jacket guy. My bad. Right. Um, and then Leah Thompson is attacked by thugs in the alley. Fans. Fans. Yeah. They, yeah. So yet again, in, in as many weeks, just another casual sexual assault right off the bat. Well, you know, I Or mean, attempted, I should say. You can't really get That's, the plot of a movie going without a sexual apparently assault. Apparently not. In yeah. the 80s, apparently not. Like, it, it uh, happens what, a what few crime times. should it be? Yeah. Uh, rape. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> well, she's a girl, so we're going to so rape. rape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can't be carrying anything valuable, except, yeah, it's yeah. just. Except her rape part. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize to everyone. Um, so, <laughs> um, although geez. you coined rape parts, I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Um, oh God, Twitter. Um, Leah Thompson's attacked by thugs in the alley, and Howard decides to help. Mm-hmm. He defeats them using a unique style of martial arts he calls Quack Fu. It's yeah. pretty common on Duck World, though. I'd imagine yeah. so. I mean. 
Hey everyone, Thoreau from Harmless Phosphorescence here with a message for you. Yes, you listening to me talk. Did you know that the Harmless Entertainment Network has a Patreon? That's right, you can join in and get extra fun like a Star Wars Harmless Phosphorescence miniseries, a patron-only Q&A roundtable episode. We have great bonus episodes of audio dramas like Attention Hellmart Shoppers in 1994. But not only that, if we reach our next patron goal, we'll do a monthly bonus Harmless Phosphorescence about a patron-chosen non-superhero movie. Plus, there are great new shows on the way, and if you're a patron, you'll get to hear them first. Head over to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment today, and for the price of a cup of coffee, you too can join our super awesome superhero club. Now, back to the show. Do you have any history tidbits of Duck Fu? Quack Fu? Quack Fu. <laughs> no, I don't have any history tidbits of Quack Fu. But that scene, he's, he's hiding there, and he's trying to ignore it. He's mm-hmm. trying to ignore the... Sexual oh, harassment that's right. going on. The cries for help. The cries for help. I and mean, then he just says, that's it. No Mr. Nice Duck. After they call her snot nose for the second time. Yeah. yeah. He's, um, he's not having that. And he, like, It's like, called allergies, asshole. Yeah. He Do they have mucus on his planet? They don't out have of a trash stuff. can. He like leaps up and out. Like, yeah. And I love his line when he, after he leaps up and out. He says, let the female creature go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, authoritative every duck's got his limit and you scum have pushed me over the line yeah that's kind of like a popeye vibe like, yeah <laughs> totally. stands all i can stands and i can't stands no more after the thugs flee howard asks where he is and she tells him he's in cleveland on earth she starts to leave but feels bad for howard she decides to take him to her apartment and <laughs> let him spend the night like, can uh, I something? so he th- they talk about her band and he's like why are you playing in dumps like this? or why don't you get a new manager? And she says, because we have a contract. <laughs> right. So yeah. that's the contract that to play dude. in this indu- this abandoned industrial warehouse well, also behind chain link fence. Her that's, gigantic apartment. Yeah. Gigantic. But well, again, in fair, an abandoned. It's in Cleveland. It's also in Cleveland. So. But it was in an abandoned type warehouse. <laughs> was, yeah, maybe she's yeah, a squatter. A yeah, loft. she's a warehouse loft. Yeah. 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 I was, but that space was huge. But it was huge. Um, also, right. the scene where we have the really tense connection, obviously, between Beverly and Howard. The saxophone solo, the music in the rain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's one of the worst moments in this movie. <laughs> like, this, just the pacing and the feel of this scene is so terrible. It's pretty bad. We Setting also, up yeah. the sexual They're looking tension. at each other and then, yeah. like, hey, hey, man. Well, yeah. Before it gets too far away uh, in the, the opening... Um, hijinks sequence we saw that Howard had fleshy palms oh yeah oh, and around uh, his eyeballs yeah. and the yeah the like weird, a monkey the weird would. skin around his eyeballs if you weren't uh, uncomfortable uh, look for these things so in the movie much about and this yeah, the fleshy it. padded yeah. hands so, fleshy padded hands and fingernails so much about fingernails the, yeah. so much about this yeah. just made me uncomfortable yeah uncanny valley all the way and little just, things like that were choices you know like that oh, has yeah. nothing to do with the comic book or the creator you know yeah you could have just, just like, no, them, he should have flesh hands. You could just Somebody make them yeah. feathery hands. And they, it would be fine. No just deal. like those as, titties as, you made earlier. As, yeah, right. as DuckTales taught us. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, she takes him to her his apartment uh, and introduces herself as Beverly, and he asks for a beer. He sits and Oh, does. she offers him milk in a bowl. In a bowl, in a bowl yeah. first, in a bowl. yes. Yeah. yeah. And like, he says he'd prefer a beer. Doll, a doll I don't drink out of bowls. I've you never a had a Or milk before. Yeah, that's what it's like. Well, you can guess the birds aren't into milk, right, lady? Yeah, you've you've <laughs> seen birds. So Howard has no said it himself. For he's a sensitive duck. Yeah, you know this is, is no he? place for a sensitive duck. He's Twenty-seven. He's still learning yeah. he, about he, himself <laughs> and his body. All he, that too. Then he mutters to himself, like, "I'll put you in a bowl." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he he he's, he's aggressive. <laughs> he is. And he really is. Um, and yeah, until he's not. Um. <laughs> Uh, so. Well, yeah, they made him way less like he was purposefully obnoxious in the comics. That was part of his character, like yeah, really yeah. abrasive and obnoxious, S- and chewing on cigars and stuff. But yeah. you know, it's a movie, so they got the kids got to love him somehow. Yeah, well, yeah, they were. Yeah, that's the thing is, it was half a kids' movie and half not. Yep. Um, Nobody was happy. Yeah, yeah they were winking a like, lot at like, like a lot of sexual stuff. And a weird lot like of Shrek, yeah. but way way worse. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Great. I don't know. There was there was no Smash Mouth in Howard the Duck. So yeah, it's, and it hurt it's for it. Grace. It probably would have improved the movie if there had been. <laughs> if he just starts singing, and I saw her face. Right. Oh. Oof. Um. 
He did not sing, though. No, he did not sing, but he played the guitar later. Anyways. Um, Spoiler. Yeah. He sits and a truck goes by, shaking his chair and giving Howard a uh, some PTSD flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Ter- like, they literally flashbacks. They're the most terrifying part of the whole movie. That, yeah. that, that scene is what I remember from my childhood watching this. Yeah. It's the, the wide eyes and him, like, shaking, having, like, a serious flashback. Yeah, it was intense. Yeah, it was, it was freaky. Uh, he tells Post time and space death. That's a good acronym <laughs> for PTSD. <laughs> oh, man. I was, like, where I was, trying, I was yeah. trying to yeah. think all afternoon. Uh, he tells Beverly about his life back home and how he gave up his music dreams to become an advertising copywriter. Um, so he's like a Matt. He's a Don Draper. Yeah. <gasps> Which Ooh, a Drake mad. is a duck. Oh, he yeah. could have been Don Draper if Matt. only they'd known about that show that was coming thirty years later. Mad, yep. mad duck, mad <laughs> ducks, <laughs> mad ducks. <laughs> yeah. His little ad, he he does his little ad. He holds up a perfume and says something like, oh, you know, that's right, yeah. like he's going to love the way he smells. Some more <laughs> eloquent than that. <laughs> like, he's not bad. Like, put it on you. They talk. Put it on you. <laughs> what is that Calvin Dor- Doritos <laughs> campaign? That I, uh, it, it was oil of something. Yeah. Um, supposed to be Olay, but I didn't write it down. Mm. I failed. They talk about Howard's they greater. Do pro- they produce their own natural oil to keep their feathers, you know. Duck facts. Cool and water. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just have duck facts every episode? <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. I'll bring in a duck. All right. <laughs> okay. so are we going like to have a like a Jack Hanna? Real duck in <laughs> the <laughs> show? I feel like Josh, you realize that we don't have a camera. Yeah. You heard it here first. Like, no, he has a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> Where are you going to get a duck, bro? <laughs> well, he knows a guy. I know a guy. Yeah. I know a guy. Got a duck guy? Yeah, you don't worry Is about that part. Is he a duck? <laughs> no, the guy's not a duck. Oh, oh um, shit. That'd be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about Howard's great. <laughs> they talk about Howard's greater purpose, and he says they need to get home. He falls asleep in her window, and she tentatively touches his feathers and then covers him with a blanket before going through his wallet. <laughs> yeah, and finding that unpackaged tiny condom. Yeah, so the unpackaged. That's condom. the problem I have with it. Is it's unpack- unpackaged. Yeah, you know what a condom is by the package. The yeah. package is pretty iconic for a condom. But they wanted to show the it's, tiny. It's unpackaged and unused. Yes. Right. That can't be good. No, no it's a risk gonna get, He's going to get lint he and dust not, on it. Yeah, he should not use that condom. So did he <laughs> like, Did he on the sly on the way back to her house like unwrap the condom and like keep it ready? No, and I think it's always been like that. I think it was for the sight for, gag. Yeah, yeah, just for months. But they, they he's been in his wallet. I, and it's yeah. just bad sexual health like advice. Well, yeah. Right. Don't you know? open them, children. Oh yeah. my keep God. them in the package. Don't keep them in your wallet. No, no, so, some yeah. and don't some linty for her take pleasure. Them out of the whoever he you're uses using them. yeah, whoever he uses that with is gonna get a UTI. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 It's been rubbing up against money, which is or the dirtiest eggs. thing on the planet. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's our condom corner this week. <laughs> <laughs> don't wrap here. Dick and money. So we see we see his uh, mallard card. Yes, and his blooming yep. ducks card. Yep, and then the money uh, with George Washington on the front. Yeah, and apparently the country he lives in is the United States of Anatidae. Mm. And that's their their classification, right? Is that, that is, Latin for duck? That is the biological family of water birds, including duck ducks, backs. ducks, geese, and swans. <laughs> Anatidae, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Duck back. <laughs> I was going to look it up, but I figured you were going to look it up. So <laughs> when in doubt, I will look it up. Yep. Um, we cut Until he doesn't. That's yeah. been my, yeah. <laughs> um, the following day, Beverly packs Howard in a, in a garbage bag and takes him to Phil Blumbert, a scientist who Beverly hopes can help Howard return to his world. He's amazed by Howard and suspects him of having superpowers. Yeah, all of Superman's. Yeah, he, he runs down the list. Yeah, yeah. telekinesis, right. uh, or, laser uh, vision yeah. from your eyes. telepathy. Can you read the future? Mm-hmm. Fly. Tim Robbins, man. Can you yeah. read my mind? <laughs> I'm a fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should have had a mind song while they were up in that glider <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> if you're up in the air, mind song time. Uh, Howard threatens to leave, and Phil explains his theory of duck evolution. 
Yeah. So, what, and was that chart? I, I looked down for a minute, which I often do. <laughs> was the chart of the evolution of man, you know, but ducks, was that already there? No. The, the chart yeah. of the evolution of man was there. And then he said, use your imagination okay. and um, the light yeah. shown on Somewhere the, the, new, on right, the Howard's duck evolution. Planet. That's what I thought. That's yeah. what I yeah. like. There will be a Imagine sign. if you will. Yeah. Um, after Phil is revealed to be only a lab assistant, Howard and Beverly leave and argue. He tells her to leave him alone. Um, Howard's disgusted that they're all hairless apes. Yes, yeah. very disgusted. And stupid yeah. to him. Yeah. He's like, are, are you a scientist or a janitor? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, they argue. Um, he tells her to leave him alone, and she stomps away, leaving Howard all by himself. He decides to find a job. Yeah, he gets accosted by some kids. It's really weird. Uh, uh -huh. He tells the kids to fug off. Yeah. Uh, fug off. Oh, ah. oh, wow. I thought he said bug off. I'm pretty sure he said fug off. Huh. All Which right. was weird. Mm. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so a uh, welfare office or unemployment well, office. Okay. Well, Why did. The, no, no. The, well, the, 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 okay, so this brings me to a point here. <laughs> Everyone is either 90% of the population is not freaked out enough right. by Howard. Yeah. yeah. Like, not even close. Well, he's getting a lot of screams, uh, but he has a lot of conversations with people that, yeah, they should be screaming. And so yeah, his, conversations. his social worker is not at all phased by no. the fact that he's a duck. She's pissed that he doesn't have a job. Okay, well, she thinks it's a ploy. Yeah. Yeah, that's his little... Yeah, yeah. We cut to the unemployment office where his social worker tells him she's going to find him a job despite his controversial appearance. All right. <laughs> Contr There's so a lot of anti-duck... <laughs> right, so, media propaganda. So yeah, no. So like the corollary here is like you know a, another race, <laughs> like his controversial appearance. Right, he yeah. was wearing yeah. pants, which is well, controversial you know. for a duck. <laughs> yeah, because you know Donald didn't wear pants. He kind of no, had a no mo Disney ducks wear pants. Kind of yeah. had a mohawk. You know what? The, you Except know, for Launchpad McQuack. Yeah, uh, when he was around, he did kind of have a mohawk. mohawk. Yeah, a faux, I, if that a was faux well, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, his his feathers become erect. Yeah. On the top of his head when he is uh, aroused. Yes. So he needed a job. Why did he need a job? Just because he realized he was stuck on this planet. Yeah, he's got to make his way. This, this guy Phil isn't going to be able to help. So, um, so and does he have an apartment? We didn't see that, but no, he's not no. living with Beverly. No, we didn't see an apartment. Yeah. Uh, after he gets, uh, after he quits from the sex sauna. Yeah, the uh, swingers club. Um, yeah. We see him riding on the bus and then sitting on a bench. Um, he's got a pretty snazzy little outfit. Yeah, well, a little. Well, but he, he, he shoplifted children. it from. He shoplifted it from Goodwill. Like, well, well, there was that one. Um, he was wearing all the kids' clothes um, yeah. when, uh, when he was in the unemployment office. But then after he quits and he's riding the bus, he's got like a little three piece suit. And, like a like business attire, oh, yeah. got twenty and a, and a in fedora. My uh, that was <laughs> that was his best outfit of the the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't he? Yeah, he didn't wear it for long. No. Um. Well, yeah. Okay. So he gets a job as a janitor at a local romance spa. Yeah. It looks like. Has anybody heard of Plato's Retreat by any chance? Nope. It was a very famous swingers club in the seventies. They even like made a movie about it uh, in the seventies. Yeah, New York City. So huh. it looked exactly like this. Just Interesting. Poorly lit, gross, like <laughs> lots of water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's where STDs came from, kids. <laughs> um, his boss tosses him into a hot tub with a couple getting it on. Mm -hmm. um, and so he retaliates by pushing the boss into a pool of filth, and then he quits. I and I it do was a mud bath. In like yeah, it was a mud bath. bath. Yeah. But there was like, oh, he there, was pulling a bra yeah, out of it. There was a sign <laughs> above <laughs> that said lava of love. Right. All right. Like, I, well, I, I, I looked down. <laughs> and I just I get just, into a spa throw. I think you'd really enjoy it, you know? A mud spa? Yeah, a mud spa. I just mentioned the thing about the swingers club. And, you know, us being our age, we were unsure. But this was supposedly supposed to hit with the kids in right. 1984. <laughs> just like, oh, they'll get the Plato's Retreat jokes. They, <laughs> they'll totally. Kids are like, oh, swingers clubs, tell me about it. So weird. <laughs> he sees a TV in a store window and discovers the duck hunting season. Um, as well as uh, cartoons. He freaks out and flees, finding himself back in the alley he originally crashed in, uh, where Howard enters the club where Beverly and Cherry Bomb are performing a, a slow, sad song that really does not fit the crowd. One of the worst musical moments in this movie. Yeah. Um, There's a cameo by Miguel Sandoval. 
um, famous uh, Latin character actor. He's in Jurassic Park. He's the guy running the mine when the, oh, yeah, the lawyer yeah, shows yeah. up. I thought, yeah, I thought Mr. Hammond would be here. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's a great actor. He's been in a lot of things. Um, and who was he in this? He's the Leah bar Thompson. owner. Or yeah. It says he's bar owner or bar manager, but he's at the bar. And then the other guy, um, what's his name? He has like a gangst- like a nickname. Yeah. Oh, Rico. Is it Rico? Richie. Rich, Richie. Richie. That's right. But he's standing between them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess oh, he owns was, the club. Was he the guy that was uh, giving the manager money? Um, yes. Yeah. He paid um, the, the, the manager. manager. Right. Yeah. Um, trying to manager trying to pimp her out. Yeah. Well, or that's Basically. the take that you know because he's the that's the band is playing in his club, so you know here's the money for your band. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. He was just paying like, the band, and the manager wasn't going to give them the money. Yeah. Right. There, there was a, some. It, it seemed like the, the owner thought he was going to get some. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. As, yeah, a, as a result of giving the money. Well, to I mean, the it, they are a chick band, yeah, and it is 1986. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, at which point so, Terry Bomb uh, or Leah Thompson stops the slad song and says, "It's time to rock." She doesn't literally say it's time to rock, but she right, decides yeah, it's time to rock. Yeah. yeah. Um, Howard comes across the manager, confronts him when he insults the band. Um, he insists the manager gives Howard the band's uh, money to give to them after a bar fight. Yeah, yeah. a fight Crazy breaks out. Bar fight. Yeah, and Howard gets the upper hand. So Brian pointed out to me that uh, Richie um, was the guy, the car valet from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh-huh. I knew I oh, recognized yeah. him what from somewhere. Co- what country do you think this is? <laughs> 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 so uh, Josh just does impressions <laughs> of, yeah. of, of walk on bars. <laughs> no, no, I'm all so irritating. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that was him. Uh, yeah. I think. Other than Jeffrey Jones, I thought there was another Ferris Bueller character. Oh, never mind. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'll think. Yeah. Um, so uh, the manager lets them out of their contract after uh, Howard gets the <laughs> upper hand. Yeah, and he, he uses everyone in the bar as a witness. Yes. <laughs> like, as, <laughs> as notaries and again, on the spot. Again, everyone is not freaked out by the fact that he's a duck. Until he brings up the space rabies. Yes. Then they, oh, yeah. then they freak out a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, Nobody touch me. I've got space rabies. Um, Howard. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like an oh, a- AIDS vibe, too. Yeah. Um, Howard rejoins Beverly backstage after the band's performance and meets the band. Uh, she tells him she was worried about him. He apologizes and they make up. So I have to give a shout out to Holly Robinson, who was KC yeah. on the keyboards. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Holly Robinson. Uh, we may all know best um, as Officer Judy Hoffs uh, from 21 Jump, Jump Street. 21 yep. <laughs> Jump Street. She was fantastic. Yeah, she was great. And she was actually doing the performances along with Leah Thompson. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at that, that point, Phil arrives with beer and pizza and is excited to see Howard. Oh, he also is excited to see the girls. Well, yeah. <laughs> I missed the show, uh, but I'm here to watch you change. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Um, from so. <laughs> oh, he tells him he's uh, working on getting him home, he's and then he tells the girls, with a fork. "Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another abomination." <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Howard tells the girls that he got the band's money, and they're ecstatic. <laughs> Phil plucks a feather, causing Howard much distress. Because uh, Phil had like three really bad theories um, that were posed to him by other uh-huh. scientists, but then like he gets a call. He has to go talk to whoever, and he comes back, and he's in his manic phase again. He's, he's very manic. He's a very, he's he's yeah. a lunatic. He yeah. really is. He um, is. And he's bent on fame and fortune. It's yeah. not even about science. No. Right. So he, <laughs> yeah. he manically plucks a feather from Howard's tail, and he's almost taunting him, just like I'm gonna I'm gonna prove where you came from. Blah, blah. <laughs> just like, or else you'll thank me. What I'm were some of the theories? Soul. Do you remember some of oh. the theories? Um, one was that, um, he was an ancient duck that had been frozen oh, in ice for, in <laughs> ice for yeah. several million years. Um, ancient Samoans worshipped oh, a, a, a large God. duck yeah. figure, yeah. Um, yeah. which I, I'm not familiar I don't, with. Yeah, I, don't I, I, that might possibly be what we call a lie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
bullshit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you had me till then. Um, yeah, I can't think of what the... There was a third theory that was yeah. equally implausible. Yeah. Um, Howard accompanies Beverly back to her apartment where after hearing him jam, Beverly tells him he should be their manager. He, he is <laughs> awful on the keyboard. He's really bad. So he he just prints, he presses a button and it's just some auto beat from that particular organ. Yeah. Um, I used which, to own that drum machine. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. TR-707. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. I bought it from the guy who did the music for Lost and wow. I sold it and I <laughs> am kicking myself still. What? Uh, it doesn't do what Howard Does did. It? it doesn't play bass lines or anything like that. It just is a drum machine. It's great. It's a great drum machine. But can you like do beats from Lost on it? <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't think he was doing it, but that was the guy that I bought it from. That wow. was like, I walked into his studio and it was great. I was like, what do you do? He's like, oh, I've done some music for, you know, TV shows. Huh. I do Lost. I was like, this is dope. Wow. It was like 20. Whoa. It was amazing. So Howard gets this beat and bass line going and it, it basically turns in, um, I mean, later it'll be the Howard the Duck theme song. Yeah. But he's just like, yeah. And he just starts mashing the keys. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> in his little so dance. So haphazardly and out of so, tune. And and she comes in, she's like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Cute. And he's little, just like, oh, that's a song I never finished. A little butt wiggle so, the whole time. Yeah. Too. So, so this leads me to the question Is Howard a really terrible musician? Yes. Is maybe the reason he know. didn't make it because he's not very good. Oh, yeah, we'll get there. Could yeah. be. This movie continues to get worse. Um, and it ends. <laughs> On its worst musical moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he makes a lewd comment, and she invites him into bed to watch Letterman. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, he flirts, and when she calls his bluff, he freaks out. Oh, yeah, he says his lewd comment, um, I don't know if it was that lewd, he says, uh, I have, I've developed a greater appreciation for the female version of the human anatomy. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, Again, as, like she a lot of us. as she bends over. And then yeah. gives a little cat call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They have cats on Duck Of course, town? Duck of course they do. They have duck cats. <laughs> duck world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call them dats. Like, well, they Another have, duck murdered by his pet. They have apes on Duck World. They just never evolved into humanoids. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, doesn't she say different stri- Like She's into it. She wants yeah. to uh, yeah, give she, it a shot. Well, yeah, but, but then she says she was just messing with him. No, he says that. No, no, well, she's, she yeah. says he says to him. that first as he's really uncomfortable, and then she says that afterwards. Oh, she's probably to make him covering it up. He comes on to her, um, she calls his bluff, and then he backs down, and she makes him really uncomfortable. Yeah, um, but th- then at that point afterwards, she's, she says she was messing with him back. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't so, one of them say different strokes? Something. Yeah, that's yeah, in there I somewhere. Know. But I yeah. I had a Gary Coleman different but, strokes. But they were really. I, I don't know if the, either of them were joking until they got cold feet. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I agree with that. They were both down to clown. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> A million furries born overnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is that from? Down to clown. What is that from? Um, just things people say. No. <laughs> no <there's> a... <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Jerry Wagner used to say it all the time. I know, but there's a particular thing where he says, I'm blah, 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 and I'm always down to clown. <laughs> I feel like it might have been Paul Rudd. I don't know. Maybe. Um, so um, <laughs> uh, he, uh, they uh, are interrupted by Blumberg and two of his colleagues, including Dr. Jenning, who reveal that a laser spectroscope they were inventing was aimed at Howard's planet and transported him to Earth when it was activated. Well, it was actually aimed at the uh, the gases around Alpha Centauri, uh, uh, but it w- some unknown force <laughs> redirected the laser to hit Howard's living room, which they yeah. never explained. They never explained right? the force. Well, yeah. I, I guess I it wasn't important. It was the dark. <coughs> oh, the overlords. Yeah, it may have had a hand in it. Yes. Oh, they were already. Okay, okay gotcha. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Howard supposes they might be able to send him home with the laser, and they theorize it might possibly work, and establish a con- they might be able to establish a continuing link between their planets. But it has to be that night. Bev tells yeah. Howard <laughs> she's going to miss him. Um, Howard tells her that she's going to miss. He's going to miss her. It's like, oh, um, she's the one thing that's making him sad about leaving. Yeah. Home, so right? this is really an end of the movie kind of speech. Yeah. I yeah. thought. Yeah. The saxophone well, music. Is he does think he's about to leave. Yeah, yeah. 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 Playing, it's bad. Yeah. Just, I mean, just from a screenwriting point of view, it it was seemed oddly placed. Yeah. Um, the level of pathos they were going for seemed oddly placed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
On the van ride to the lab, Howard tells her that she makes it hard for him to leave because he feels uh, so much for her. Then upon their arrival at the laboratory, alarms are going off, and they find a disfigured scientist <laughs> who just kind of wanders away without receiving medical treatment. <laughs> but he's, he shouts out, it's exploded again. It was terrible. We have no right to tamper with the universe. Right. Yeah, that's, that's true. Wow, that's heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, there's the existential <laughs> element they were talking there about. There. It wasn't whether or not to hump Leah Thompson. <laughs> well, that's pretty existential. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, and they find the laser spectroscope sparking. Um, they are told, uh, Dr. Jennings took the full brunt of the blast off screen. Yes. <laughs> <A> malfunction. <laughs> Raises the possibility of something else being transported to Earth. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the cops show up and try to take the suit off Howard before realizing he isn't in a costume. And Howard wants to see his lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have a lawyer? <laughs> He got a job, an apartment, and a lawyer. <laughs> That's the first thing you do. Well, <laughs> the Duck World just justice system is identical to our justice yeah, system. It's so, not yeah. at all like Krypton. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> Twelve ducks of your peers. Get onto this record. <laughs> you Don't break that. Don't break that thing. <laughs> you broke it. Now we're going to throw you into space forever. Inside uh, an LP. <laughs> which apparently is a lava planet. Yes. The mirror broke on both sides. Uh, uh, <laughs> they arrest Howard. They arrest Howard. And he throws a cigar in a trash can. They arrest him for the charge of being an illegal alien. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, made up charge. Yeah. yeah. And would have been cute at the time. You know, <laughs> yeah. Superman's an illegal alien. But yeah. <laughs> I was so just like, Bleh. Yeah, exactly. Now. Ugh. He's an undocumented duck. <laughs> uh, no, he is documented actually as a social worker. That's right. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah, so Holy he's got. So he has a social security number. A social security duck. <laughs> a social duckurity card. Is he a duck on the dole? Oh. Duck on the. Yeah, she mentions that, doesn't she? On the dole. She yeah, says she the says dole, the dole. Yeah, dole. like yeah. You, you just want to stay on the dole. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, sneaking around the uh, lab. Oh, yeah, Beverly steals the cop's gun and they escape. Then sneaking around the lab, they find Dr. Walter Jennings, who is acting strange, after Howard decides to throw the gun away. Right. Yeah, they they overhear the cops saying that he's um, that he's armed, so he just tosses the gun into a, a drum of unknown oh. gross liquid. Right. Just like... Yeah. And then they say he's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um they they get his height wrong by one inch and he's a little upset about that. Sure, yeah. naturally. They say him three. He's three point three foot one, like three point two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, luckily three foot two. Sorry, luckily they, deal. Luckily they use the imperial system. Where he's <laughs> yes. from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Weird. They haven't fixed that there either. And then they yeah. uh. they proclaim that they should shoot to kill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he makes an SPCA joke right around here somewhere. I don't know. I thought yeah. it was funny that they had the SPCA <laughs> right, on yeah. Duck World. Uh, he tells them uh, he saw something. Oh, yeah. Dr. Jenning tells them he saw something in the explosion, and the experiment was unauthorized. They escape together in a car, and he warns them that there's something dangerous inside him taking over his body. <laughs> was, <laughs> yeah, what I did think you that's eat? true. Jeffrey Jones <laughs> turned yeah. down a dark path. Okay, why did they let this survivor of a recent industrial accident drive the car <laughs> yes <'Cause> look, <laughs> he's hurt he's why, in pain why he's, well look at your choices a duck screams. and a woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't let the lady drive Jesus, they get all nervous <laughs> she might have her time of the month right then <laughs> <laughs> and if it's raining forget it bears could attack them um, yeah, why was he driving? Because he was going through his whole metamorphosis the <laughs> yeah, whole time. But the fault yeah. telling, giving them a play by play of his metamorphosis. <laughs> yeah, that's really sad. Like that weird uh, voice. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So, so I got a real um, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Men in Black, uh, bug guy. Yeah, kind of, yeah. What was D'Onofrio? Yeah, character. D'Onofrio. Yeah. Right, well, D'Onofrio. Yeah. And in fact, the creatures that they turn into remind me um, yeah. from the first book, Men yeah. in Black. Yeah, those roach creatures. Um. So yeah, uh, he Jeffy Tambor passes out at the wheel and Howard, Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones. Jones. But I would love Jeffrey that Tambor, if it was Jeffrey damn Tambor. It, damn it, yeah, George Blue. I'm terrible at names. I've or learned. Hank Kingsley. Yeah, also kind of an asshole. We've discovered. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, he's a dick. Yeah, um, passes out at the wheel and uh, Howard and Beverly steer the car into a sushi diner. Parking okay, lot. yeah, the sushi diner. Cajun right. sushi. Right. Joe, 
Joe, Joe Roma's Roma. Cajun Sushi. Yes. Joe Roma. So you got an Italian name there. Yes. You know, but it doesn't necessarily have to be Italian food. Well, yeah. did, did you see on the menu there was like a name like that crossed out in Sharpie and like it was written on them? Oh, <laughs> like no, they that's set amazing. this up the night before. Well, yeah, no, like it's they're, they're like the regular diner isn't working. What if we become a sushi diner? <laughs> That's yeah, hilarious. so it was very con- yeah sushi diner. They had those uh, you know uh, karate or kung fu headbands. Yeah, with the rising sun. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, so odd. <laughs> yeah, this but is, that waitress was hilarious. The I waitress. Mean, I don't know who she was. The waitress was my favorite character in the entire movie, hands yeah. down. Um, yeah. Are we having the same conversation here? <laughs> You're looking for. Someone else. No, I am someone else. I no longer require human food. But then he's like, she took my eggs. Yeah, she <laughs> took my eggs. Okay, and at yeah. this point, he becomes the funniest character okay. in the entire yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah, at this point, he, at this point he starts stealing the movie. Yeah. 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 In the diner, the creature inside Jenny uh, introduces itself as a dark overlord of the universe that was released from his celestial prison in space and entered Jenny's body. At the Nexus of Sominus. The Whoa. Nexus of Sominus. Wow. Yeah, the region of demons outside normal space time. Far out. He tells them that he will destroy all life. Oh. Just kind of flat out. Yep. No, no, like like Thanos half. Right. Full on. Yeah. All life. And they just don't take him seriously. So no. the, the evil overlord is is supposed to be based on Thog, the Nether Spawn, overmaster of Sominus, which is the character that brought Howard the Duck to the Earth in the comics. Oh, okay. wow! Cool. So it it kind of is them pointing without saying this long ridiculous name, right. um, and just calling him an evil overlord instead, and not the only one. That's no. cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he uh, shows them the code key. Oh wait, wait, wait. No, so wait. He uh, he demonstrates his power, his developing mental powers by destroying table utensils and condiments. Then he shows them the code key that activates the laser and tells them he's going to bring down the rest of the Dark Overlords. Has uh, the waitress brought the uh, their specials yet? Yeah, uh, yeah. somewhere at this point. Somewhere she at does. this point, yeah. she brings in their food and it's uh, three plates of fried eggs and like corned beef hash. Yeah, right, <laughs> like you would at a diner, but not yeah, sushi. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, Howard freaks out because yep. they're eggs. They're eggs. Um, but um, he. He exclaims just some, you know, his disgust, and she says, what's wrong? And um, Jenning, Dark Jenning, as I started calling him around here, um, <laughs> she says, you haven't even tasted it. Oh, wait, no. She says, what's wrong? This will mean the extinction of all existing life forms. <laughs> you haven't even You've tasted taste- it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he's very quippy for an intergalactic yeah. evil. Yeah. Like he's he knows colloquialism. He's super like, quippy. If, you're, if it's too hot, get, you can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, right. uh, Howard, they say that on his yeah. planet. They get her human and, TV and, and, and in, the nether world. In, right? in, in his see what nether Superman's realm outside of space and time, they yeah. say that. <laughs> uh, um, Howard uh, steals the key, saying he's going to use the laser to go home. Then a fight ensues when a group of truckers in the diner begin insulting yep. Howard. Kick his ass, Seabass. Yep, Seabass. Yeah. <laughs> Taking the code key. Just yoink right out of his hand. Just like, what's this? A key to your duckmobile? And he just puts it in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. it's like, and what? It's like, yeah. 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 All right, dick. <laughs> yeah, guys in trucker hats and puffy vests could basically do whatever they wanted in as the long 80s. As, as long as they're in a diner, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, I liked the fact that Howard employed Jennings, demon Jennings is what I called him, because yeah. he's not even a demon, but just mm-hmm. seemed like a demon. Dark Jennings. Um, but he was, like, ch- using his enemy against his new enemy, which is such, like, a clever tactic in yeah. that uh-huh. kind of situation. But it didn't work out as well as no. it could have it, been, as far as the writing goes. But that's fun. Yeah. It's a fun thing to do. It, yeah. It took a while. Yeah. Um, Beverly says to Jennings, are you just going to sit there? And that's when he says, she took my eggs. Yeah. <laughs> He help you got to help him. And he's like, I said I didn't need food. I didn't say I didn't want. Well, food. and he says uh, to me one of the funniest lines is she's begging him to help, uh-huh. and he just goes, "You barely know him." Oh yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> he, like, he's so he's my, judgy. Yeah, he's like, my he's my favorite duck. <laughs> you hardly know him. Yeah, you hardly, <laughs> hardly know him. Know I mean, and it's true. <laughs> but out of ducks, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, he's the duck I know the best. (laughs) Uh, Howard is captured by the mob and is almost killed by the diner chef, who I assume is going to make 
Yeah, was they're it going to eat sushi. him? Right, it was going to be to like a Benihana him. table yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but Beverly convinces the Dark Overlord to help Howard. Oh, he, she tries the ploy of shouting, "He's my boyfriend." And they all stop for a second. Cloris Leachman style. And then just say, that's disgusting. And then proceed to. Yeah. Turn right back to. We're going to eat him. But you're disgusting. <laughs> yeah, this anthropomorphic <laughs> duck. Right? Yeah. Weird. And there were ducks. Hang- so he he uh, mentioned the eggs on his plate. But then um, in the ki- in the window to the kitchen um, were ducks hanging. Cooked ducks. Oh, my God. Weird, so it's like a Chinese Cajun that, sushi place. That's like, yeah. You know, I mean, sushi. You that's like some Texas duck. Chainsaw Massacre sure. stuff no, for him. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, Szechuan does whole roasted duck. But yeah, yeah in Cleveland, yeah. <laughs> this restaurant. Yeah, um, yeah, duck is fusion good. food. <laughs> Cold fusion, <laughs> way ahead of its time. Cold fusion, Cold cool. fusion food. Uh, so she's so cold. The the, uh, the dark overlord takes out the trucker, frees Howard, and destroys the diner. Because they get the uh, the crowd laughing about yeah. him, and then Beverly just says. Look, they're laughing at you. So he takes umbrage. Yes. Um, and I love what he says when he stands up. It was another one, one of those things. Um, Release the small waterfowl. <laughs> uh, Bring me the code key. Bring me the code <laughs> key. That looks like a, a hotel pass key. Right. Yeah. Or like a little Namco game, like a football game. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Dark Overlord takes the code key back from Howard and leaves, taking Beverly with him and stealing a semi. In the truck, mm-hmm. he says he needs more energy, and a tentacle comes out of his mouth, diving into the truck's dashboard and sucking energy out of, out the, of the cigarette lighter. Yeah, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. This is when yeah. the effects start to tank. You yeah, know, and we all yeah. know movies aren't made in sequence, but like from that point on, they get way shittier than they, they were really in the first do. half of the movie. Yeah. That's not it's odd. The yeah, budget I'm not gonna, constraints or something. That's uh, what I'm, yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> did they shoot you yeah. know beginning, middle, and end? Because yeah, specifically there was a dummy at the very beginning of that that sequence that that, that should have just been cut out of the movie. It was so bad. Yeah, so yeah. badly he just looked, made. And and the dummy's head was so much smaller than Jeffrey yeah. Jones. So yeah, yeah, it didn't look like a cast or a it mold looked or anything. Terrible. It just nope. looked bad, really terrible. and gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cops show up at the diner with Phil. Who has been arrested for his presence at the laboratory with no security clearance? Howard sees him and helps him escape, or tries to, but Phil escapes on his own. This uh, this part uh, actually made made me laugh out loud because um, Howard was hiding amongst the the other statues of animals in Kitty Land. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing he's posing e. like a like a duck. Uh, would. Well, <laughs> um, but then also Phil's like super stoked about getting a criminal record. Yeah, yeah, he's excited. He's, he's excited. Make him it. tough. Like, well, and it's a weird McLovin thing. Like, why would they bring him to the next crime? That exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, just hang with us, Phil. You're all right. <laughs> Could you take off the handcuffs? You're not that all right. <laughs> uh, um, they uh, discover an ultralight aircraft, and Howard tells him he's afraid to fly. He doesn't swim, and he's afraid to fly. There's a saying on Duck World: If God intended us to fly, He wouldn't have taken away our wings. Boom. Ba-da-boom. Uh, it's one of the more interesting things that happens in the movie. It that is. Line. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, oh that's yeah. an interesting thing to think about. Existential. Yeah. Um, Duck facts. <laughs> Duck facts. Duck facts. <laughs> the next morning, the Dark Overlord is searching for power. He's found a nuclear power plant. Meanwhile, Howard and Phil finally get the ultralight going after all night, apparently, yeah. messing with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they just had to build it. And despite Howard saying that he's afraid to fly, Phil makes the duck fly the plane. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's a natural, though. Yeah. So they, they take off, fleeing from the cops, and uh, uh, go to search for the Dark Overlord and Beverly. Um, yeah. Well, then, and they need a new body for the you know incoming overlords. So that's why he grabs Beverly. Yes. Yes. The damsel in distress scene. You exactly. Know. Um, at the power plant, the Dark Overlord ties Beverly up and takes a tour of the plant. He, <laughs> he uses his powers to break into the reactor and sucks up the power. So the uh, the guy, the, he goes on like the nuclear reactor tour, yeah, essentially. And uh, the tour guide um, says that uh, it the reactor produces uh, one. I'm sorry, one, no one million kilowatts 
of power, which to Doc Brown would be one gigawatt. Yeah, of power. no, no, no. To Doc Brown would be one gigawatt. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, that's right. But yeah, um, but <laughs> still he needs one twenty one to travel. One, one point twenty one still not enough for time travel. Yeah, far mm, enough. Bummer. Out of this nuclear reactor. And yeah, also, and that's not how nuclear reactors work. There are so many weird things. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> seen. yeah, it's just a tube that comes down from the reactor <laughs> into a television or a refrigerator. Uh, yeah, it's a series of tubes. Yeah. Um, and so they need electricity to live. I mean, they're, I don't know. Yeah. Why are they coming here? I just, isn't there a lot of electricity? The, yeah. Out the, there? I, the, the nuclear power plant was a cool place for him to go. I don't know sure. why it didn't like. Right. Stay there and there. You know, it's a good place to end just, the movie. It was a weird well because he had to get back to this. He had to get back to the spectroscope. Yeah. And I know they just wanted to destroy all life, but I don't know. It's like, just why did the overlords want to come here? What's so the... Phil and Howard have been building this plane all night, and Dark Jenning and Beverly have just been driving around in this truck all night long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. It, it, I mean, it didn't take that long to get from the science lab to the <laughs> diner. Right. But it's taking all night long to get back. I guess because he had to go. Well, to the they had to go to the nuclear. Hoda. Yeah, yeah. Nuclear power. Um, they got women have to stop and use the bathroom a lot. <laughs> I've re- I've read that. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, the police. <laughs> meanwhile, the police are chasing Howard and Phil in the aircraft through the town. They escape and buzz a group of duck hunters. Oh <laughs> yeah. Then the th- from the skies to all duck hunters. Tora, Tora, Tora. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting my revenge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was wow. Uh, um, the dark overlord busts up some cops, and then back on the aircraft, Howard and Phil are continuing their adventure. When the dark overlord returns to the lab, um, so oh, the he busts up he whatever whatever you just said about the cops. He they have to go through like. An emissions checkpoint. Yes. Oh yeah. It's just I didn't. Is that a thing they did? Smog emissions checkpoints. Is it like well, a, yeah. I huh. mean, is that when? No, no. That's a weight thing. When when semis have to pull right. off. Yeah. Yes. They still no, do. But it that. was every car. It was every yeah. car. Everybody had to go through this like random emissions testing on the side of the yeah. road. I could see that happening yes. in California, maybe mm. in the eighties, but not, not not Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. yeah. No, they ignored their pollution for a long time. <laughs> yeah. In Ohio. Uh, um, and yeah, so, and then at this point, there's a weird thing where like Phil gets genuinely angry at Howard for like, like he's like, and tries to, uh, turn on him and like give him up to the cops while they're flying. Oh yeah. Well, um, he, he has to fix the fuel line. Yeah. And then when the fuel line gets fixed, he gets like bumped out of the, the, the carriage oh, yeah. and he's hanging underneath the plane, mm-hmm. um, with his head, f- uh, going through the water. And um, Howard said something snarky as, well, he's, like as, you're he's, back. as he's climbing up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as he's climbing up, before he sits down, he makes the strangling motion. And yeah. then another jolt, like he gets bumped down again and he's hanging onto the cage. And then he's then he starts like telling the cops like he, you know, the duck. Did it? It was all the duck. It wasn't me. He's a thing. duck he's, terrorist. He's a duck terrorist. Yeah, um, which is just patently not true because it was his idea to escape and steal the airplane. Yeah, exactly. His so motivation. He's, he's trying to cover his ass. But he, he yeah, he kind of sucks. Yeah, he do, yeah they never yeah. clearly define what he's after exactly. Fame. No, no. Yeah, I mean, fame, fame and money. That's what it seems but, but then fame. he's like, well, I'll throw it all to the wind to like, like help Beverly and like help the world and like, but like. No, he's a very ill-defined character. Yeah. And a few yeah. times it's about science, it sounds like, you know. But, but no. when he did finally uh, get back up, um, Howard did say, um, welcome back, Phil. And he says, it's great to be back, Howard. Uh, yeah, yeah. And right. then he's yeah. just instantly back on board with, <laughs> yeah, like, the for... adventure. Poorly written character. Very, yeah, very, very poorly. Yeah, he um, won a Razzie for he, that. He yeah. did. Oh. That's how bad this character is. Yeah, wow. Tim Robbins won, a, yeah. won the Razzie for his supporting but, uh, actor. Worst, worst supporting yeah. actor. Oh, well done. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, they uh, crash in the water after losing their wings and make their way back to the lab where they find Beverly strapped under the spectroscope. We're reminded that Howard can't swim. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, where the Dark Overlord plans to transfer another one of his kind into her body with the Dimension Machine. This is a great sci-fi shot. 
like inside yeah. this giant room with this big piece of machinery, mm. the evil scientist monster, mm-hmm. you know, like got the girl strapped at the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it was set up so beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. But it looked great. Then they movie continued rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, so Howard and Phil enter a restricted storeroom and steal a neutron disintegrator. Mm-hmm. Bill saves Howard's life. I don't know how it knows to only disintegrate neutrons. Um, <laughs> I'm just burning, doing the neutron dance. Phil saves Howard's life, and Howard phases off with Jenning, blasting him with the neuron disintegrator. Well, and he, this, the whole the the blocking of this scene is on a vehicle. Like yeah, he's they, the hero is fighting on like a golf cart. Yeah, with his gun strapped to it. They have it, to attach the the giant gun to. Uh, a science car which they mm-hmm. both clearly have the strength to handle yeah yes well okay well they're not mole men yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should well, have they should have done that like crouch down uh, yeah. you know lay the gun on top of howard yeah well okay and so he's he's driving the like like a like straight at uh jennings but why? Because and the gun can shoot much further than yes. Jennings is from him. <laughs> yeah, they explained that he had to be closer for it to give its full effect. But yeah, yeah. yeah. it was I'm not. It took time to explain a, that. Yeah. This was a, yeah. th- This whole end sequence was badly staged and badly shot. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, and it's, it's just it's lucky that it takes Dark Jennings um, so long to charge up for his power attacks and yes. he, at right, this point fortunate, his yeah. metamorphosis has made him grotesque and it's really interesting to see he's got like bones growing out of his back and yeah he's got, he like, looks a, pretty cool his face yeah, yeah the there's there's a lot of like palpatine uh in him looking which is like hit the dark yeah. eyes and that kind of thing like you said he becomes the most interesting character i remember yeah. as a kid like my friends and I, we'd watch it a lot but yeah laugh at everything he said all the diner stuff all yeah, the, yeah. just he, yeah, also, he, also had, and he also had super breath at this point. He was, oh, he that's was right. blowing the, the science cart away. Yeah. So, hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. The science or cart. Super breath. <laughs> the, the science. It looked that. like it was an electric oh. vehicle, also. Yeah. Which like that air, whole thing was like batteries, you, you know? Around. Yeah. Um, so, activated by the seatbelt. So he blasts Jenny with the neuron disintegrator. Howard, but, Howard had a lot of like really unnecessary, a string of unnecessary quips right here that just didn't land like everyone he just screams out turbocharge and then he says now it's my turn dark overlord i want you prepare to eat beak so long sucker like Holy this whole shit. this string where <laughs> he's trying uninterrupted to get a catchphrase he's trying to get in a catchphrase yeah the <laughs> woozle wuzzle none, no, none it, of them land it reminds me of um, wubba lubba dub dub yeah <laughs> what's the kid um, brooklyn 99 jake you know is oh, always God. like going through his taglines for everything <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. the boys are back <laughs> yeah <laughs> boys will be boys <laughs> They they do like the crossing the beams effect. That was kind of a neat thing. Yeah, but he is yeah. driving forward, also. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, so bad. Yeah, so um, yeah, he he believes he destroys the Dark Overlord, finds Jenning is back to normal, but then Jenning tells him the creature has only been forced out of his body. It's still alive. They release Beverly, and the Dark Overlord reveals his true form, bursting forth as a giant lobster scorpion. I yeah. thought it was more of a rancor vagina crab. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, just a big vertical mouth in, uh, with four layers of teeth. and Yeah. In a mm. pretty terrible sub-Harryhausen, like... The animation was so bad. It yeah. was awful. Like, we've already seen superhero movies that had better green screen or matte use. Um, that... And this is ILM. It's I know. I couldn't believe it. Post like, Return of the Jedi yeah. ILM. Right. Those aliens look like they were color forms or stickers. Well, and like, I mean, they the, did not blend the background. The Rancor no. was one of the the most like you kind of had to suspend disbelief a little bit sure. for that scene because, sure. but it was so amazing at the same time. This lacks all of the magic of something like that. It, it just, was just doesn't stark. blend well. Yeah, it was something Gene Siskel would have been mad about. But yeah. It looked so animated, and it was so bad. It was like, terrible. Yeah. Like, worse than Snow White. You know what I mean? Like, Snow White was well, more... <laughs> the creature design, too. I didn't, like, look too deep into, like, why the creature looked like this 
rag, rancor crab thing. Um, uh-huh. But uh, th- it was too complicated. It had too much stuff going on. There was on. way yeah. too much well, going yeah, on. Yeah. 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 It, they could have simplified that thing, and it would have been way more compelling. But it was just this weird talking. It was a blob of moving clay bullshit. Yeah. Well, you're right. There was so much that it compelled you Spikes to look, to try to look at everything yeah. on them. And yeah, there was no central focus focal point right. on the on the creature itself it was it was really weird it was really poorly done and and surprising because a they have all of this comic book stuff to draw from right b like george lucas and right. ilm like, yeah. yeah exactly like he said we had just seen boba fett fly yeah <laughs> you yeah. know like it, it, but no i mean like these aliens yeah get it yeah yeah it's it so was bad. awful um so yeah the dark overlord um uh uh Hits Howard with a tentacle and activates the laser. He blasts Beverly and Phil, freezing them with their some sort of like electric boogaloo boot thing. Yeah, exactly. And they sparkled. They yeah. did. And <laughs> Jennings gives Howard a saw to cut himself loose. He gets back to the neuron disintegrator uh, vehicle, and Howard fires the neutron disintegrator at the hideous beast, rushing towards him. He obliterates him. Phil and Jenny. And then he lets out a Tarzan yell. Yes, he yeah. does. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this was there was terrible. some altered states kind yeah, of cliches. stuff going on. Uh, some yeah. of the visual effects yeah. were kind of weird, chopping in and out of different layers of things. It was it's, cool, but. Yeah, which was all right if it hadn't been so bad. Yeah. To, um, Phil and Jennings urge Howard to destroy the laser before more overlords arrive. It's one minute to arrival. Yes, one yeah. minute till arrival. Yeah, with the little like almost like an airport so voiceover. Ju- like, yeah. Jude, one minute. Jude actually brought this up to me. He overlords will be boarding me. in ten minutes. He said, "So did he reprogram the entire computer to announce when overlords? Because before it just shot a ray into space." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good point, Jude. Yeah. It's, uh, he's a great computer programmer as well yeah. as a demon. He called Gus. That was all in the code key. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, Beverly tells him, don't do it. You should go home. Howard decides to destroy the laser spectroscope, preventing more dark overlords from arriving on Earth. And at this point, he takes the time to pick up the laser and put it on his shoulder yeah. to shoot it. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Just shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? For real. Yeah. Uh, uh, goodbye, uh, Duck World. He but says. he seems to care about humanity more than Cal El does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, for sure. Sure. Just to compare. Um, yeah. Um mm. it's fate, you know. He accepts it as fate. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and his life it. wasn't that great in Duck well, World. He looks back. Well, yeah. He's you know? taking a liking to hairless ape right. women. Well, yeah. 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 well, now he gets to be a manager of a band and you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he doesn't have to be an ad copywriter. Yeah. Right. Um, Beverly finds Howard under some rubble and believes he's dead. But he wakes up and is okay. He jokes about being a dark overlord. Oh, yeah. I am not Howard. <laughs> I am yeah. not Howard. Um, she, she had the touching line of, uh, this world didn't treat you very well, but you saved it, didn't you? Oh, yeah, so that was beautiful. very sappy. Yeah. Um, she and Tim Robbins both look terrified when, he's, when he uh, pranks them. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you be? Oh, of course. He's a he's a he knows quack fu and he's a demon. Yeah, I think that's probably where it was starting to sink in. They were in this movie. <laughs> I would just be glad that he didn't look like that grotesque thing. Anyways. Yeah. Exactly. Oh god. Yeah. He uh, he uh, Jennings mentions that when they're in the diner. He says, "I look." I'm wearing this suit so I you don't see my grotesque form. Right. And she she says, what, yeah. what does she say? Uh, lucky for all uh, the diners. Yeah. yeah right. Exactly. So him being in Howard would be a good thing. I'm someone else. <laughs> I'm someone <laughs> That's all he else. says. I'm yeah. someone else. Howard then becomes Beverly's manager. Gets her a big gig, apparently. Hires <laughs> Phil as as a roadie. Stage, yeah. stage yeah. manager. Stage. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so he's got to do like And... Uh, Plays guitar with Beverly on stage. Okay, a total Marty McFly. Like, I know Marty does the duck walk like Chuck Berry, so that's not like Marty McFly, but he looked like Marty. He, he's moving, or I don't know. It was yeah. just Leah Thompson, and it looked like Michael J. Duck. But <laughs> as a as duck. A Mike, Michael J. Duck? Yes, that's what it, yeah, not it was. It was a complete accident that he ended up on stage because he right. pulled the wrong rope. He was supposed to cue the giant egg, um, but he pulled the wrong rope, and he ends up being 
hoisted out onto stage. Mm-hmm. But thank goodness, Phil has the little tiny guitar ready. Just exactly. ready. He's ready yeah. to go. Yeah. It's so it rock was, and roll. It was never a part of the plan. It was all a setup. We were, we're on to you guys. But, that was, but it was a little tiny Fender? Is that right? It was Some, it? Something like that. I thought yeah. it was like an LTD or something. All right. Yeah. It's like the neighborhood of B. Watch me for the changes. <laughs> <laughs> then meanwhile, they're like, <laughs> um, this is your cousin, so uh, Marvin Duck. The film version of this song has one of the Duck worst Barry. guitar solos I have ever heard. It really? Is bad. Like worse than guitar solos that I play. And like I'm bad at guitar. Like the Cherry Bomb version of the song or the, the, the Thomas version, Dolby? The, the live version of Howard and Beverly playing the solo, guitar okay. together. The solo that Howard plays. Okay. Yeah. That, they, that they're well, clearly miming. They're not actually playing it on stage. That duck or, is not playing that? Uh, but uh, it sounds like it. I mean, yeah. it sounds like a guy in a duck costume playing <laughs> guitar. Yeah. I'm sure he's very encumbered. But yeah. the, the recorded version yeah. of the solo is amazing. There's there's yeah. some really good uh, edits of like a music video version of the movie on YouTube. Uh-huh. And I love this song. It's so catchy. I really liked it. I liked it as a kid. Song. I liked yeah. Thomas Dolby as a kid, too. I, yeah. got, I got the, the lyrics to the chorus. Uh, uh-huh. The first chorus, anyway, because it changed a little bit. But they call him Howard the Duck. Uh, come yeah. on, with me, oh, Brian. Yeah. Gotta, it's my favorite uh, part. No way to conceal it. With a feather's touch, I love him apart. Um, they call him Howard the Duck. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> if it ain't funk, he don't feel it. And he shot an arrow straight to my heart. Wow. Okay. So Tom Stolby wrote wow. that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sent it over to the producers of this I movie. Didn't, I didn't see an arrow anywhere in this film. Nope. Yeah, needless to say, uh, that may be an overt reference to Duck Penis. Yeah. Well, we almost, we, we almost got through that's that's what talking the, about duck penis. Yeah, that's the, well, we that's have to assume the there was stands no, for. there was no uh, even in Greek. duck sex in the movie. But right, we assume that this song has been written. It's inspired by their love, well, yes. it, which has a physical aspect. And maybe it's because it's twenty. Se- he's twenty seven, but you know he comes off as pretty suave at first, and then you know he's almost like a teenager, nervous. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's also go, a hairless ape. He's go play with the hairless look. ape. Well, in his <laughs> wallet, you got the picture of him with the two ducks on the beach. He's yep. pretty smooth, I'm sure, in duck world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's that woman oh, who yeah. uh, left him the message. Not yeah. woman. Duck. Yeah, he's, he's lady duck. He's his girlfriend. Clearly, uh, Rico Suave in duck world. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he, he gets he gets some tail. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ba-doom. Ba-doom. <laughs> Anybody? Okay. Oh. Uh, so, I shut out all the overlords in the crabs in there. <laughs> um, anyone got anything else on it? Uh, this um, movie's terrible. Watch it. It's hilarious. <laughs> no, Every, if so, you haven't seen it in a long time, watch it again. Um, I'm going to watch it more. It's I, terrible, but it's fun terrible while still being clearly like just terrible. It went it. down easy. Way easier than Toxie, but I kind of like Toxie. But that's weird. Don't, but I think Toxie might have been a better movie. Yeah, yeah. Don't watch it twice in two days. You'll yeah. hate yourself. You will. That's a lot. But listen to the song. It's good. I um, So I like to watch the credits and try to find either a weird job or weird name. Somebody uh, had on this production. Somebody had the job of duck coach. Nice. <laughs> there are no living ducks in this. No actual no. human earth oh, ducks. There was uh, in the duck hunting. Um, oh, scene, for duck season. There, there was a duck that flew behind the plane and quacked. Okay. Um, after he. Well, ter- it's always been my the, understanding the that those people would be called a handler. Yeah, you know, yeah, like the yeah, duck yeah. handler. But this was a coach. <laughs> so I don't know if it was Get for out the, there, boys. You can do it. I don't know if it was for that actor, the little person who played Howard, or what. It's like, no. A duck would never play that solo. Weird. Yeah, I wonder if it was maybe they were teaching him how to do the, like, <laughs> voice. Yeah, you know? Donald's. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A duck would never wear those pants. <laughs> Thanks, coach. Uh, all right. So, guys, we're at it. We're at the time. We have to rank this thing. So, um, this is the 11th movie we've watched for this podcast. Um, and where do you want me to start? Top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom, bottom yeah. All right. Is this movie better or worse than The Toxic Avenger? That's, our, that's number 11. I mean, so much is better. However, like as far as linear storytelling, we brought it up during Toxie. Like yeah. that's a per, that's a really well done beginning, middle, end for superheroes arc. <laughs> no, it, similar similar themes too of the girlfriend falling in love with the freaky looking right. guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so okay. So know. so it's um, so we have right above Toxie, Condor Man. Oh man, I <laughs> is this better than Condor Man? No. I don't think. Well, mm, no, uh. but again, it's that trick. Like, no, I don't. I don't think it is a better movie, but it means more to me. Like, I enjoyed this. Yeah. I have memories from my childhood, but 
No, I think it, <laughs> Condor it's, Man was a better production. It was. Yeah, Disney it was put up some money. So, yeah, so it's definitely not going above Condor Man. So I, it's just a matter of, is it above or below Toxie? I really was turned off by Toxic Avenger. The things that turned me off of this movie did not turn me off. Okay, I agree Toxic with that. Toxic Avenger, where I was just, like, shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Second to last thing. No, yeah. I'm not a gore guy. Al, thoughts? Um, it was pretty graphic, though. You're right. Yeah, yeah just above Toxic Avenger, I uh, think. We've got three more Toxic yeah. Avenger it, it was movies. not as. It was <laughs> not as... Brutal and no, it wasn't harsh, and it's not as good but, as any but, of the but Superman. I mean, but again, didn't you know, so I mean, with that, that's that's I mean, it was that's supposed to be brutal and harsh. They succeeded in what yeah, they were true. doing with Toxic Avenger. Um, I did have a question. Um, how is this a superhero movie? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Howard the Duck. Yeah. How is he a superhero? He's a normal duck. Okay. So he's got uh, no and powers. Stays that way. So okay, so no, he does not have powers. He uh, he does come from uh, another place. Yes, where he and he fights evil. Okay, and what in the end, I kind of went off off a screen. He shows up to fight Thanos in in uh, in a, in Endgame. Yeah, yeah. He does. So I I felt the character at that point earned being a superhero. Okay. So I felt that the film earned being a superhero. All right. And it is the first Marvel property. True. Yeah. Put yeah. on screen. It's more honorary than anything else. Okay. But yeah. you can let us know, um, folks at home. Yeah. What do, do you think? You do know. You, do you think it counts? I mean. Uh, I believe in Howard. The he Dog. knows Quack yeah. Fu. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. He plays mm-hmm. guitar pretty terribly too. Um, in the comics, Howard the Duck had minimal magic abilities. Yeah, mm. but those oh. did not show up here. Well, and yeah, yeah. At, um, any, rate. at any rate, uh, where did we rate this? Was this uh, second to last? Second so to yeah, last? we put it in at uh, number, number, 10. 10, number ten. Number ten, yeah. right above Toxic Avenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's where we're at. Do we want to? What's our number one still? Superman? Superman, Superman. is still number one. Yeah, Superman 78 I'm fine. is number one still. Um, so that's it. That's where we are. Um, I'll, I'll quickly run down the list because, again, we're not – in another few weeks, I think we're going to get to the point where we're, it's going to be too much to run down the list. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Superman at number one. Well, I'll, I'll go backwards. Toxic Avenger at the bottom. Then Howard, Condor Man, Hero at Large, Superman and the Mole Men, Supergirl – Superman 3, Superman 2, Swamp Thing, Batman 66, and then at number one, Superman 78. All right. Hmm. So um, we've got next week, Superman 4. The quest for peace. Our final, our final Superman, um, our final Sulkin Superman. And knowing Superman is motivation, it should be called <laughs> the quest for a peace. <laughs> but ah. Um, so yes, next week we'll be taking a look at Superman four, the quest for peace from 1987. And that will close out an era of this show for sure. Um, so that's it guys. Um, thank you all very much for listening. Uh, I am throw smiley and I am not Jack. I'm Josh CC and I'm a duck lawyer. I'm Brian Lesh and I'm the voice of the cosmos. I'm Alaric Weber, and my duckness is inborn. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. This episode of Harmless Phosphorescence was brought to you by executive producers Katie and Finn Thorpe and Atticus Burkett, as well as producers Michael Beckwith, Hedda Paulson, Kirsten Reed, Alyssa Dent, and Jay Birchtree. Make sure you rate and review us on iTunes. If you'd like to become a patron, visit patreon.com slash harmlessphosphorescence. Follow us on Twitter, join our group on Facebook, or follow us on Instagram. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next week.